Have you ever wondered about the process someone uses to create their logo? Well, in this video, we'll walk through the process of how we created our logo once we came up with our brand name. So stay tuned. Welcome back to our channel. And if this is the first time we're meeting, I'm Don Rimel, and along with my wife, we live life intentionally as nomads. And you'll find content on our channel about our weekly show, sharing our adventures, and also educational videos just like this one. And so if you're interested in how to create a logo, the first thing you should do is make sure you det determine what your brand name is. And so if you're interested in how we did that, you can go right up here and click and you'll see the video that we did about how we came up with our brand name. We're going to organize it such that we're going to talk about first what were the things that influenced us on the design and how we want to design it. The second one is we're going to walk through what the design is and what does it mean. And then finally we're going to talk about how we outsource it. And if you're not interested in all, all these categories, what you can do is look in the description below and we'll have timestamps for each of these sections. The first thing that we want to cover is the influencers of our design because it's important to figure out what aspects you want your logo to have and what constraints you have. And the first thing we consider is what platforms we're going to run on. And we knew we wanted to run on YouTube to be able to support our video content, but we also knew there would be additional platforms we want to run on such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And what we realized real quickly was they use a round profile for the picture. So whatever logo we came up with, we wanted to make sure that it would fit in that circle. The second thing you want to consider is that in, in the RV community, Nomad community, stickers or labels are, are, are pretty, pretty important in it. Um, and a lot of people do it. So what we wanted to do was to be able to kind of balance the cost and the benefit of that. And if we picked a logo that fit in a standard shape, such as a circle or square or rectangle, then in that case, we could have our logo printed and it would be able to be done in a more cost-effective manner. The third thing we wanted to do was we wanted to look at using bold colors to be able to, to, to separate what we're doing from, um, from others. And so we use those as the design influences. The next thing we wanted to do was we wanted to look at examples of other RVers or nomads to see how their logos are so we could see if there's any anything we could pick up from those designs or see if there were commonalities. So in our community, there are a lot of people who are in the RV or nomad community. And what we did is we looked at those that we looked at most and, and many of these are people that we've met and, and, and developed friendships. And what we looked at was that there were a lot of them that used a circular shape, which would be very supportive of, of the various platforms. So what that allowed us to do is kind of look at what others in our space is, is doing with their logos and see if there are any commonalities that we wanted to draw upon. So the next thing we did was say, okay, let's figure out having meaning to what our logo is. Because for us, it was important not just to have some logo out there, but what we wanted to do is have various elements of it to be able to have meaning, but almost even tell its own little story. So now we're going to move into how we decided on the elements that we wanted to include in our logo. What we wanted to do is to have the foundation of our logo to be something that was a bit subtle, but also to have lots of meaning. And we spent a lot of time looking through the internet, looking for various shapes and, shapes and elements that we could use as the foundation of our logo. And as we already had decided that we wanted to go round because that would be able to meet our needs of uh, supporting the various platform profiles when they're being displayed, but also a standard shape. What we, what we want to do is make sure those things would fit. And what we came across was um, this symbol right here, which is a circle with an, uh, a line through it and an arrow. And this symbol it was used in the hobo culture of the 20th century. And the symbol means to go. And as being nomads, that seemed to fit real well. So the next step was, what could we do to wrap things around this symbol to give additional meaning? So the next thing we did is we wanted a complementary shape to go with the to-go symbol. And we wanted it to be something recognizable. And so we settled upon the compass shape. 
And if you notice from the previous uh, uh, examples that we had, you'd see a couple of those uh, logos include this, some variation of the shape. And why we also wanted to include it was to be able to represent the fact is that it's our intent as nomads is to be able to go basically anywhere and to basically go to all points of the compass. And so then we wanted to see how we would flush this in with the two shapes. And what we noticed is we had two half circles that were in the middle of this logo when you put it together. And we wanted to figure out some shapes that would make a lot of sense. And so for us, what we wanted to do is represent the various environments we go to. Now we uh, are both originally from Florida, so the, the water is very important to us, but we also find the majesty that's in the mountains. So what we did was we came up with two elements that said, you know, had the mountains and the sea. And as part of that, as, as we thread a story together with our logo, it basically says we want to go from the mountains to the sea. Then what we want to do is wrap our words around our logo and, and find it in a way that would fit very nicely. So to, to say what our brand is. So when you put the logo all together, you get this logo right here and it has a story. And that story is to go to all points of the compass from the mountains to the sea, sharing our nomadic story. So, each time you see our logo, you have an understanding of what are the elements that are uh, put together with it and what the meaning is. The other thing we did was we took advantage of bold coloring. So we looked at both gold and black as being bold colors to be for our logo. And the other thing it does is it fits really nice in a circle. So if we create, if we, we generate things like our labels, or to fit inside the profiles of the various platforms, it fits very well. And so what we were able to do is we're able to, to meet our objectives. And what we chose to do was to outsource it. So now that you have your thoughts on what you want for the design, how do you go about outsourcing it? So the very first thing you need to do is you need to write it down. You need to write your thoughts down. You need to, to put together any design elements you have and structure it in a way that you can communicate to someone doing it that, that you want to do it. And the second thing you do is you find an outsourcer. And for us to find a graphic artist, we went to Fiverr because it was recommended. And what you have to do in that case is you look at a bunch of different uh, artists who are working on things, you look at their work, you go through and decide and has a, a range of, of, of cost for supporting it. And we finally settled on a artist that kind of had the look and feel of some of their examples that we wanted. And for their services, it was $75. And while that's a little higher than some of the other artists, what we got out of it was we were guaranteed to get all the source files and all the output files. And that would include for our logo and a couple of different uh, uh, versions of it, but also other graphics such as putting the watermark in our, in our videos. And so for us, the $75 and the process in place met our needs based upon the quality we saw of the examples. And so we engaged a graphic artist to do that. And what we were required to do then is go back and forth. We went through a series of, they took our initial uh, uh, notes and elements. They uh, created a couple of mock-ups for it, shared them with us. We changed how the mountain and the sea view looked because originally it looked more like an island. And then once we got to the point that we agreed upon it, we completed the uh, transaction, uh, approved the account, they gave us the files, and uh, we we're pretty happy with it. In summary, we used three different phases to put our logo together. And that was done in a manner that basically allowed us first to decide on what influences um, and what constraints that we wanted to have with our logo. The second one was to go through and figure out what elements that we wanted to have, what shapes, what things of meaning. Uh, were there anything that was, you know, that we wanted to include that was more personal? Some people will put their Jeep or uh, the image of their RV or other elements into their logo. And then finally, we're not graphic artists, so the, the third piece is finding someone to actually design and build your logo for you. And when you have all those things in place, then you can start using it on your website uh, as part of your YouTube channel. You have the ability of, of doing things like 
uh, putting it on shirts or hats. You can do things like put it on labels. And what you can also do in that case is you can do things like postcards or mouse pads or those type things. And so now that we have our logo and we're very happy with it, now we can take advantage and use it. So do you have a logo? If you do have a logo, let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. Thank you very much.